What I want to say about Manchester United, before I even start any of this video, I just recorded this whole video and then I realised I wanted to make exactly this point. The idea that we know best from the outside, when there are so many moving parts within this Manchester United structure right now, so many things changing, kind of feels mad to me. I get that the end product isn't there. I get that this is like looking at that task rabbit device and going, is this AI? But like, it, it's frustrating that for some weird reason, even though we don't have the insight, even though Eric Ten Hag does have more of the insight, even though there are a lot of people at Manchester United who do, Omar Barada, all these kind of people, we still think we know better than them because the one, two results were off, off the field, uh, on the field. And that feels weird to me. So I'm just wondering, and I want to ask you as Manchester United fans, do you think that you're in a position, genuinely, I want to ask you this question, to assess the whole situation and make a call on whether Eric Ten Hag is going to be there in a year, there in two years, going to extend another contract? Or do you realistically, if you really reflect on this, actually think that the limited information that I have to go on, the limited information that you have to go on, and I get that like, it kind of leads to a bit of a like, oh, well, what am I meant to do then? Do you want me to just not say anything? Like, I'm not saying say nothing, but I'm saying, do we have to make such rash judgments about all these things? Do we have to try and dunk on Eric Ten Hag in a press conference because it's kind of satisfying? You know, we get the frustration, but where do you go from there would be my point. And not knowing everything, do you think we're genuinely in a position where we know best? And even though we've watched the Alex Ferguson era, we know what good football looks like, even though we can see Liverpool doing things and City and all these guys doing things. How confident are you that that is actually turning around right now? If Arne Slot, who is a peer of Eric Ten Hag, can so accurately and so casually break down some of his tactics, and we think of that as Arne Slot dunking on Eric Ten Hag, I think it shows the level of insight that we actually have into this industry and how dumbed down we are about the way that football works. Yeah, like, I get that it's fun to dunk on Chelsea for having a big squad, or it's fun to dunk on Arsenal for being the band club at any one time, or it's fun to say that Manchester United used to be good and now bad. Even the other day I said, oh, I miss when Liverpool and Manchester United were good, and lots of people were like, they've never been good at the same time. And their point was this. It was amazing. They've never finished one and two like that. They have, for, just for uh, the, the actual sake of history. But... The, the fact that we define the way that football works and the fact that we are so competitive about almost being competitive and we want, like, do, do you not want to hear what Honest Lot and his peers think of what the way that Eric Ten Hag plays? For them to go, yes, there's a different formation. Yes, there's a difference in intensity. Yes, there's a way that the players are changing their movement. Yes, I can see where that's going. Praising him, really, from a distance for how well he plays, but also how obvious that seems to most people in the industry, and yet to a lot of YouTubers, to a lot of people breaking that down, that seems like some incredible insight that we're getting here. That maybe shows the level of understanding that we actually have of the game at this level. And so it makes me ask, how equipped are you and me to actually work out whether Eric Ten Hag really should be sacked? Or have you got talk sport confidence where actually whatever you say on like half a pint of lager, you think is actually a really great like personality defining piece of insight from you. Yeah, I actually think Eric Ten Hag should uh, go because uh, well, I came up with it in the last two minutes and I think like it's an important opinion. Just bear that in mind when, you know, we're talking here about Eric Ten Hag. Because frankly, Manchester United fans, one of my best, my best friend in the world is a Manchester United fan. I get bored of hearing the same things over and over again. And like, that is where my frustration comes from. Is I'm like, let's at least tell the story properly here, guys. The story of Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag so far reads like somewhat of a film montage that hasn't been edited yet. It like, it almost stinks of the early parts of a film where you're just kind of laying down the groundwork for where the film is gonna go. And sadly, no one knows yet who the main character of the film is. Is it Marcus Rashford? Is it Eric Ten Hag? Is it Omar Barada? Is it actually a film about the Glazers and the end of their time? Well, maybe we'll know. At some point, you can write that story. But for me, the frustration comes when people are telling the story about Manchester United at the moment, and they're kind of telling it as if it's done. Eric Ten Hag has received the backing of the owners, not that that has ever meant anything, in the last couple of days, despite having a pretty poor start to the season with one win and two losses, within which Manchester United had some good underlying numbers, we're still seeing that Manchester United 
maybe, for some of the fans, haven't moved on quite enough yet. Now, obviously, there are some mitigating factors, but after my last video, when there were a lot of comments on that video about just Manchester United in general, I realised that there was a kind of a split fan base here, and some people were saying, oh, I very much back where Manchester United are going now. I can see that there is a bit of a turning point with the new ownership in, in place, with a couple of these new players coming in, which I definitely think is a, a change in approach. Seeing Yoro, seeing Masrawi, seeing De Ligt, seeing Xerxes, I think Xerxes is incredibly exciting, um, and seeing some of the ways that the formation is changing under Eric Ten Hag, or at least some of the ball movement is changing under Eric Ten Hag, does make me feel a little bit worried as a Liverpool fan about where Manchester United are going. And I also think, you know, like I said in the last video, you can throw the baby out of the bathwater in some of these situations, but having the new manager bounce of what Arne Slot is doing, having managers who haven't quite worked out what Liverpool are doing or seeing Liverpool progress week by week is incredibly satisfying. But at the same time, like, take this quote, and I'm going to read this from Omar Barada, right? <laughs> he basically said it's impossible to estimate a timeline as to when Manchester United are going to be competing for trophies again. Imagine being a manager where you're working within a framework that won't, I mean, maybe won't publicly, maybe privately there are uh, conversations and goals that they need to hit. And imagine that's what Omar Barada is putting down for Eric Ten Hag. But imagine being in a place where publicly people don't know where you're at. Like, they can see that your team hasn't played well. And you remember, everyone remembers that clip in recent days of Eric Ten Hag and the journalist going back and forth. The journalist kind of says, uh, we don't, how can you blame the players? Or how can you put this on some of those players when actually it doesn't seem like there is a very clear line of play that you're trying to get them to play within? He kind of laughs at that. He almost mocks that. It's quite a cold, frosty response from him with an almost level of contempt for the journalist. And he sort of says, what, you haven't seen how we've been, but you don't, you're telling me you don't see anything and the journalist kind of replies well no I don't to be honest he then says well you know we've got and I think this is what comes over in a delusional manner is when he says we have an equal amount of trophies from English football to Man City last season not really acknowledging the importance of the Premier League and how much harder it is to win the Premier League than it is to win the FA Cup why other teams would focus on winning the Premier League or being better in the Premier League not only financially but also just in terms of the actual achievement in their career than winning the FA Cup and also maybe not acknowledging that, as the journalist said, in the previous round, they almost went out to Cambridge. Now, some of that may seem academic to you now because, frankly, it was last season. Manchester United didn't have some of these players. The ownership was still changing at that point. You know, different season, different times, different kit, different approach. Last season, they were much more conservative. This season, they seem to be much more free to play the kind of football that some of those players want to play. But it, the delusional level to which, with which he was able to answer that, show me a couple of things. First of all, he can afford this. He can afford to answer and speak to journalists in this way. Why? Because I probably think he knows he has the backing of this Manchester United ownership. So whatever the outside noise is, it doesn't really matter at this point. Yes, he has a lot of injuries to deal with. He'll probably have had that acknowledged internally and he'll probably have aggressively told his bosses, I've had a lot of injuries. You've not yet seen what we're able to do with this side. Their response may have been, hey, like, you need to coach some of these people, but their response may have also been, yeah, we need to give this guy a little bit of time at least to bring this out. And actually, it seems as if the Manchester United way overall as an institution is to be fluffy around things. And I'm going to quote Omar Barada direct here when asked about what it is to build a football team. What I can say is it's been demonstrated when you look at the teams who have been successful consistently for many years, it's because they have the right coach. They've signed the right players. They have the right structure around the coach and the players uh, and the players. And you need to take good decisions consistently for years, for many years to get into the position where you are financially sustainable as a club that is competing to win every single competition, which is where we want to be. Which is where we want to be is obviously an admirable thing to say, but it's fair to say that Manchester United haven't been making those decisions in recent years. But some of the small decisions, some of the more nuanced things, some of the things that don't seem to be affecting the on-pitch outcomes right now, and probably some of the things which will play out over 6 to 12 to 18 months from now, they need to be done now rather than then. You cannot in 18... Like, now, I think the club know what they're going to do with Marcus Rashford. Now... I think they know what the, the, which youth they want to keep, which players they probably want to get rid of, how they want it to look. 
who the next players are going to come in in the next transfer window. All those things are going to be mapped out for Eric Ten Hag. And he has to just kind of make it through between now and next season. And now in January. Then now in next season. Then now in that January. And there will be little goals that he'll be reaching. And then when you look back, the montage looks a little better at that point. It's not great that they have to come out and back Eric Ten Hag. I get it. But I also think the lack of other options in the market right now, which is obviously an indictment of United rather than them backing their manager, and the fact that they probably have a couple of players that they believe are yet to come back, they probably see a system they really want to play, and internally they probably understand the system better than the players, and uh, sorry, better than the journalists and the fans on the outside, I think gives me some hope for Manchester United. I also think that the, the clip is weird. It's like a strange clip to watch because the journalist essentially gets the better of Eric Ten Hag, like does, there's kind of an awkward silence where it's like, you're a dick, no, you're a dick. And Eric Ten Hag kind of says it with his eyes rather than like the way he's actually approaching himself. But then I go through some of these comments and I see like the difference in approach from lots of different fans. And after watching Eric Ten Hag's comments, I kind of think how much of this is really a fugazi. I'll read you some of this. As a long time fan, patience has worn thin, and I think that's why most fans are so frustrated. The outside point of view is so important and shows true problems we've yet to address. I completely agree with that. I really hope he's not sacked by the next break. That's not the solution at this point. And I totally agree with that. Thanks for your comments, Colin. I think sacking Eric Ten Hag now would be further destabilization of the club. Again, Backing him and keeping him are two very different things. When people say, oh, they, they backed him, well, they didn't sign him up to an improved contract. They just extended the same contract that he was already on. Maybe that's just because he, like, it's very hard for him to walk in with his agent into a meeting and justify, I deserve more money for where we're at. But at the same time, it isn't backing your manager in the way that, it, not in the confident manner that maybe you want to. And that is a subjective assessment. I'm not saying that I absolutely know that. But obviously from the outside, it doesn't look great that they've not backed him in an even more confident way. Possibly that was because they're gonna back him in the transfer window. Possibly because it's, hey, if you do this now, then there is a fat contract waiting for you at the end here. Or it's possibly that actually they don't want too many moving parts, too many unpredictable elements of bringing in a new manager, all these kind of things. And actually what they wanna do is have some consistency, build the squad up, train some of those players because hey, he is a good coach. I think, and then bring in a new manager after that, after those two years, after whatever it is. I still think that would then require patience and support from the fans. So it's okay to complain about these results, but actually in the grand scheme of things, thinking about that montage that we're putting together, uh, almost Oakland A's style, in the moment, it feels like something to complain about. In the moment, obviously it gets clicks. In the moment, the knee-jerk reaction is satisfying. But holding the line and not giving the satisfaction to Liverpool fans, the opposition fans, people like me, maybe is a better choice here. Uh, it, it's kind of, here you go. Li, you, and it, this was some of the arguments that went on in my comments, right? Liverpool and United went, uh, weren't that different stats. Liverpool made less mistakes, better at finishing, and have better mentality. If United keep that up long, along with improving their finishing and mentality, they will improve. What I read from that comment, which is a very recent comment on the video, is a couple of things. First of all, that they think, and maybe rightly so, finishing, mentality, and all these kind of things are cumulative. Yes, I agree with that. In time, if you take enough shots, you will improve your finishing, if you're a good player technically, right? If your mentality is there. But that's an assumption on all of these parts, is that the mentality is correct, the growing, the, the growth, um, circumstances are there for the players to actually grow within, the framework is there for them to grow within, and that that is viable within the next 12 to 18 months. What I, what I saw was the stark difference between Eric Ten Hag and Arne Slot in a couple of weeks. A lot of people put that down to, oh, well, he's taken over a squad that's much better from Klopp. The assessment of that squad from a lot of people last season was that it was, that it was a little short was that it would, you know, was going to come up short of where it wanted to be. But that if you gave it time, if you gave it a few more signings. So God knows what the, what the assessment of Manchester United's actual squad is at this point. I think 
I guess the point that I'm making is there is going to be a lot of people analyzing ripping apart what Manchester United did. But ripping apart individual mistakes from Casemiro or Delo or whoever it is, you're missing the point of where Manchester United are at right now. It's like picking on the paint job that a car has when it's just flown 40 feet into a ditch, turned over twice, and the, the driver is just getting out and going, everything's good, I think I can drive this one home. It's not the way it works. The comments I get, like, I, I see the frustration. But I also understand maybe that frustration needs to be vented in order for it not to build up. So maybe it's better to, for it to vent online. It's just that at the moment, it's really... It's making, like, a toxic air around Manchester United. Now, I, like, as a Liverpool fan, obviously, I kind of sports love that. But as someone who wants to see better storytelling in football and wants to see people actually understanding what's actually going on at the clubs, it just annoys me. Yeah, there were poor elements. Yeah, like, they've only got a couple of players for a couple of weeks now. Onana's positioning was bad. I don't know how to explain that. Like, for the second and the third goal, he was just standing on the wrong side of the goal. Can you coach that out of someone? I really think you can, but I want to know how. Let me know some of your frustration in the comments below, and I'd love to uh, chat to you guys down there. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, hit it. If you want to hit the Patreon, support me making more football comments, do that. Content, if you want to do that, there is a Discord just down there that you can go hit as well, and I will uh, be in the comments replying to you guys. Uh, yeah, I'll be in the Discord chatting to you guys as well. I'll chat to you in a while. Much love.